really excited to have our next guest here. We have Paulo Abade, and he's the CEO of Real Wealth Group. And for our listeners out there, you're going to learn an awful lot. So, Paulo, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So first, let's tell our listeners, what is Real Wealth Group? Give us the background. Real Wealth Group is a company geared towards servicing the needs of real estate investors, primarily in the areas of mortgage lending and mortgage investment. All right, so let's explain that because people just think mortgages, don't they, Simon? And they just think, well, they just think that's the mortgage on my house. I can borrow money. But mortgages to people in the industry have uh, for hundreds of years also uh, presented an investment opportunity. So let's talk a little bit about that, Paolo. Sure, absolutely. I mean, we're, we are investors ourselves. So we certainly understand and appreciate the needs of Canadians who are looking to expand their investment portfolio and buying investment property uh, and, and mortgages. So we can certainly help uh, investors uh, finance those acquisitions for their portfolio. And more so, we can help educate investors on how to make Um, the right and the best mortgage investment decisions in the uh, Canadian marketplace. Because a lot of people think that, you know, if they want a mortgage, of course, the options, you go to the big five banks and uh, knock on the door and hope that they'll accept you uh, and really hope that you'll you'll take whatever rate they give you. But there's so much more to it. There forever, there's been opportunities to get lending and to get financing from people that have excess money. And they're they're looking to put it somewhere. I agree totally. Uh, Real wealth mortgage can certainly help Uh, solicit all the bank and non-bank lenders really in Canada to help you finance your acquisition, whether it be your home or investment property. Uh, But many Canadians don't realize that they can act as lenders themselves. And uh, typically, this type of investing, um, although I I hate the use of the word, it's it's been considered alternative. And And it's not. It's really not. Uh, And especially over the last uh, five, six, seven years, it's certainly becoming more mainstream. And there's a variety of reasons for that. You know, I think uh, since the financial crisis Mm -hmm. and the volatility in the stock markets, uh, the average Canadian investor is looking for less volatility. They're looking for investments uh, that have some security behind them. They're looking for fixed rates of return. And mortgage investing can certainly offer all of that. And they're looking for decent returns as well. I mean, because, I mean, you hear of people putting it in in, uh, fixed rate uh, bank accounts and getting two and three percent and even less. When we're talking uh, mortgage investments, we're typically talking double digit returns, aren't we? 10, 12 percent and more. We can be. I think that that really depends on, you know, matching the right mortgage investment opportunity with the risk profile of that investor. Mm -hmm. Private mortgage investments, whether they be for first mortgage or second mortgages, can range anywhere from 5 6% annual rate of return up to 15% That's annual right. rate of return. But let's, let's talk about to the, to the average listener maybe that really hasn't really understood mortgage investments. Uh, let's walk them through very simply. So you have somebody that owns a piece of property. It could be a residential property. It could be a commercial property. It could be a, a building or a warehouse. It could be a development site. So in essence, the investor's acting like the bank, correct? Absolutely. So they're lending money to this property owner. And how am I protected? I'm, I'm giving uh, somebody who owns a piece of property $50,000 of my money or $100,000 of my money. Why is that risk-free, Paulo? Let's walk them through it step by step. Sure. Uh, you know, there's always risks to mortgage investing, and I think uh, listeners need to be... Any kind uh, of investing, Any investment, of course. Of course. Of course. But, but let's talk about the risk, the, the risk safety of it. Sure. I mean, you know, you mentioned that they, they, you, know, you receive security, and I think that's, that's a cornerstone uh, of mortgage investing. You are pledged a piece of collateral. Think about it uh, like uh, the bank did when you, know, you went to them for your first mortgage. What did they ask for? They asked for a few different things. Uh, they asked for security. Uh, they asked for uh, interest payments. And so turn that table around. You now have the ability to ask a borrower for that, that same security and for interest payments uh, based on, uh, on that mortgage. Let's, let's give a, a, a real practical and a simple example. So let's say I own a property for fi- worth $500,000, and it's verifiably worth that. You get an appraisal and so on. And let's say I've got a first mortgage on that property of $300,000. Well, there's $200,000 in equity there. And if I need to borrow $50,000, well, in essence, you know, one of the things we analyze is loan to value. And you want to make sure that you're not borrowing money 
more than 70 or 75 or some, in some cases 80% loan to value. What that means is if, if the owner of the property were to, go, were to disappear, go belly up or whatever, or go bankrupt, you could, you could then take possession of the property. That's your risk. So just like a bank can take over a property and sell it to get their, their money back, you as the lender, the mortgagee, can take over possession of the property in the event payments aren't made. You get all your money back. You get all your interest due. You even get penalties and legals. So if anything, from my experience, when, you know, the rare cases where an investment actually goes sour, the investor actually gets higher returns. Is that not correct? It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Absolutely. And for our listeners out there, it's important to remind them, and for your sake as well, Paulo, we are investors. We know about the benefit of, of taking our own money and helping other people uh, in terms of you know wanting to invest. The returns can be fantastic. The security is excellent. It's all about doing your due diligence, no matter what type of investing that you would actually do at the end of the day. But yet, we've just always relied so predominantly on those banks, the five banks, and people don't realize that there's other options out there. And I find that amazing that only recently, and I'd say probably in the last five years, that people have kind of waited up and said, okay, oh, wow, oh, this is this is interesting. And it's almost like other things had to, like the stock market, other options had, or the interest rates being so low that they had to look for other ways. Um, but those of us that have been doing it forever, I mean, we've been riding that fantastic wave for a long time. Sure. And it's it, generally, it's, it's not easy to access the private mortgage market. You can't really log on to a website or uh, visit uh, the website of a stock exchange or a mortgage exchange per se. To find those opportunities, it really it's relationship based. You have you know, to know right, uh, not just a mortgage broker, uh, but a, a broker that's sophisticated uh, in that in that area so of investment. So explain how your company is that type of organization. Sure, you know what we believe we bring to the table is a higher level of protection to investors who are looking for mortgage investments. And what do I mean when I say that? Uh, you know we only seek out mortgage investment opportunities in locations in which we have an intimate knowledge. Predominantly, we stick only to investments that are located in Toronto and the GTA, right. which I would argue, and I think many would, is certainly the strongest market in Ontario. Many would say it's the strongest market in Canada. Some might say it's the strongest market in uh, North America, while others might say it's the strongest market globally for right. real estate. So we want to be able to uh, be very close to those investments. So you stick mm -hmm. with what you know. That's right. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we're financing larger scale development projects, uh, you know, we have to put our skin in the game. We won't speak to uh, clients and potential investors about opportunities in which we are not personally uh, or through our company invest. And I think that's really, really important. And that's a very important point. That's one I want to talk about. And you guys have a great insight because you're investors yourself, you're developers yourselves, and we'll talk about that in a second. The conversation, rather, should start with a, a plan. So as a consumer, as an investor, we first have to understand what are your long-term plans because we've seen people take the wrong investment for their long-term plans. And this is what I, I think is one of the unique advantages that Real Wealth provides is you can actually help people develop an investment plan and look at both the right product, the right investment product, and maybe even the right, the right lender for those. Is that correct? Absolutely. You know, mortgage or fixed income opportunities have a place in investors' portfolios. It's our job in working with our clients to determine uh, you know, what percentage of their portfolio mortgage investments might take mm -hmm. and what their risk profile is, what types of mortgage investments are best suited for them. Could it be only first mortgages? Could it be second mortgages? Up to what loan to value ratio? Yeah. What rate of return are they comfortable with? Are they, uh, you know, are they? Do they understand their risk reward relationship when it comes to mortgages? And that's a great segue because if you understand it, understanding it as we do, you know, when you look at first mortgages, they're typically lower rates of return, but l much lower risk. Then you get into second mortgages, and then they're they're uh, higher rates of return, a little bit more risk, still relatively safe. And then you have a lot of people that want to look at, you know. Uh, investing in cash flow properties, whether they're residential or commercial. So I think it's it's important for any investor to understand you need to have a plan from the get-go so you can plan it all out and make sure you're not uh, either underutilizing your capital or maybe having it tied up too long and it could actually hinder your ability to get involved in other investments, correct? Agreed. I'm going to be the voice of our listeners and they're going to say, okay, Paulo, why your company? I've got some excess funds. I want to put it somewhere. I want the right guidance. So why you, why your company? Predominantly, it's because we're investors ourselves. We understand uh, from the perspective of an investor what's important to them. Uh, and we don't solicit or discuss any investment we wouldn't be prepared to make ourselves. 
And I think that's, that's really, really important. It's one thing to say it. You know, I invite listeners to contact us and for us to evidence it to them, you know, our methodology. Uh, you know, some of that methodology is only using uh, the highest standards in appraisals, for instance. You know, w- what's known as an AACI or a CRA appraisal. And I think that's really, really important. That's so really truly qualified individuals. Yes, yes. Which is key. Absolutely, absolutely. That's really the, the, the gold standard okay. uh, in, in appraisals. That is a cornerstone of mortgage investments. And uh, investors really need to appreciate that and educate themselves uh, on, on, on those types of appraisals. Because that's your safety net. That's really understanding the true value. Because we've seen cases where you know uh, investments are hyperinflated or overestimated and and exaggerated, and and that's where you get that's into danger. It's a kiss of death. Yeah, it's a kiss of death. Yeah. No, I agree. And you know, I wrote um, a consumer guide to mortgage investing uh, that helps investors understand some of these uh, features and characteristics that they need to be aware of uh, in mortgages. And I would invite them to, to get in contact with us uh, to, to get a copy of that consumer guide. It's, it's, it's written in a, an easy-to-understand, frequently-asked-question format, and it provides them with a, a variety of great tools to use in assessing and adjudicating risk. You know, mortgage investment opportunities must be built with the exit in mind. For many investors, the safety of their principal is almost more important uh, than the upside potential. And should be. Yeah. And, and, and that being said, it's important to determine the right balance. And when I say balance, I mean the balance between an investor's risk profile and the reward or the return that they expect. And I think there's often a disconnect. Uh, with or, or lack of expectation. Right. right? Yeah. And they don't truly understand that risk. Mm. You know, and they need someone qualified to educate them. Um, you know, on that very important, uh, very important And I part. think you, you speak right to the point. It's purely a lack of education and maybe uh, higher expectations. And, and there's, you know, look, everybody's online checking out everything. And there's a ton of raw misinformation data out there. And it's hard to kind of cut through the crap, as it were, sometimes and, and really figure out what's really going on. Yeah, I agree. You know, and the, and the combination of all these characteristics or the, the protocols that we follow at Real Wealth really result in, in a few key uh, points. You know, we believe that our methodology minimizes the fear and anxiety of investors. We educate and elevate the skills of our clients. So after they've invested with us once, twice, a few times, they're certainly better able to do so on their own, asking better questions themselves. But I bet you they never leave. <laughs> they don't. Right, exactly. You're creating smarter <laughs> investors. And, and, you know, we we follow the same thing. We've learned a long time ago. A better educated uh, client is a better client because they know themselves how to analyze uh, and, and see the value in, in, uh, in the support that we provide. Agreed. And that's why the uh, the consumer guide is there. You know, we believe we provide investors and borrowers with superior opportunities, as I mentioned, in what, you know, what I believe is uh, probably, uh, you know, the, can't, uh, the world's strongest market for real estate. Um, you know, yes, we are a mortgage brokerage, uh, but specifically we cater to the needs of real estate investors and mortgage investors because we are investors ourselves. So, Paula, I'm going to remind our listeners that they can visit realestatetalkshow.ca and we have a mortgage tab right on the top of the page there that they can click on. And, of course, they'll get more information on Real Wealth Group. But we're also going to put that consumer guide on there so they can click on that and download it uh, and get all the information that way. That's great. Yeah. Well, you guys are doing a great job with Real Wealth Group and you did a great job today here in studio. So great having you. We have to have you back, though, because there's so much more to talk about. So are you uh, willing to come back? I'd welcome the opportunity to come back. Absolutely. Thank you very much for having me today. So we look forward to coming back to educate. Very good.